be reading out of the Old Testament, Zechariah chapter 9, verses 9 through 12. And it says, English standard version, the coming king of Zion. Nine, rejoice greatly, O daughter of Zion. Shout aloud, O daughter of Jerusalem. Behold, your king is coming to you. Righteous have righteous and having salvation is he. Humble and mounted on the donkey. On the colt, the foal of a donkey. I will cut off the chariot from Ephraim and the war horse of Jerusalem. And the battle bow shall be cut off. And he shall seek peace to the nations. Yeah. His rule shall be from sea to sea and from the river and to the ends of the earth. As you also, because of the blood of my covenant with you, I will set your prisoners free from the waters of this. Return to your stronghold, O prisoners of hope. Today I declare that I will restore to your hope. God, thank you for letting your son come down here and die for our sins. God, thank you for letting everybody make it safely. Amen. Good morning, Berean. To God be the glory. This is our announcement segment. I know that you know our mission statement, so can you say it with me? We engage ourselves to proclaim the good news of Jesus Christ in both voice and vitality. To the extent that all believers would experience, experience spiritual maturity and further expand this same ministry of the kingdom and mission of God's grace to the masses. Say it with me. Amen. Amen. I know we know that. Please remember this is Women's History Month. So let's bless God for the women. <clears throat> this is Women's History Month. And we certainly want to say a great, great happy birthday to Miss Emma. Happy birthday to you. We hope you enjoy your day, Miss Emma, and you had a great birthday. This Sunday, from the reading of the scripture you heard, is Palm Sunday, the great triumphant entry. And we want to remind you about our weekly announcements. On Wednesday, is VIP each Wednesday morning, 6 o'clock a.m. on Zoom. And then Wednesdays, 6 p.m. on YouTube is Pastor's Bible Study and Prayer Meeting. Please join us on the YouTube platform. And young people, get ready for the Easter egg hunt. It happens on Saturday at noon. Saturday at noon is our Easter egg hunt. And remember, there'll be prizes, there'll be food, there will be games. And this uh, next Sunday is our Two Fish, Five Loaves ministry. Please remember to bring quality, non-perishable items. We are blessed to be a blessing. And next Sunday, get up early. 
We are meeting here at 6 a.m. for sunrise service. We are going to glorify our God at 6 a.m. So please join us here and then 10.30 a.m. for the morning worship experience. <clears throat> We've told you that we have a building fund goal of 18000 and we are working on it. So our new goal... Our current fee, our current amount is $2,048. So let's keep working. Thank you so much for your gifts. <clears throat> As we can conclude these announcements, please remember to govern yourselves accordingly. Please remember to value each other and pray for one another. We have so many that are ill, but our God is indeed the healer. So we trust that God has already done it. We know the finished work of Jesus Christ. These have been your reminders and announcements as you go about your week. Remember to stay committed to the vision and continue to walk by faith.
My, my, my. We serve a good God. I want to direct your attention for just a few moments to the Gospel of John. And uh, we'll be looking primarily at the seventh chapter of John's Gospel beginning with verse 37. Through verse 42. John 7. Beginning with verse 37 through 42. On the last day of the feast. The great day. Jesus stood up and cried out. If anyone thirst. Let him come to me and drink. And whoever believes in me, as the scripture has said, out of his heart will flow rivers of living water. Now this he said about the Spirit, whom those who believed in him were to receive. For as yet, the Spirit had not been given, because Jesus was not yet glorified. And when they heard these words, some of the people said, This really is the prophet. Others said, This is the Christ. But some said, Is the Christ to come from Galilee? We want to uh, tag this text this morning, Living Water. Living Water. I will never forget that journey that Margie and I were able to take to the promised land several years ago. I tell you, it was a life-changing experience. We will be forever grateful to God and others, such as yourselves, the members here of Berean, who helped us to get there. I thoroughly would encourage anyone that if possible, you would take this full, the full advantage of any opportunity to get to Jerusalem. My life was changed. My whole perspective on preaching and the whole depth of my teaching increase simply because I was able to walk where Jesus walked. I distinctly remember Dr. Clayton climbing up some of those hills and walking where Jesus walked on those fertile grounds. The same fertile grounds the farmers, where the farmers would scatter the mustard seed. You remember? They scattered the seed for a future harvest as she watched them. I couldn't climb those hills, but she did. So I stayed at the bottom of the hill, the mountain there. And when she returned, she brought back a bag of seeds. And when I looked 
at that tiny seed, I knew exactly what Jesus meant when he said, Verily, verily, I say to you, if you had the faith <laughs> the size of a mustard seed, you would be able to say to this mountain, Move! <laughs> and it would move. And nothing will be impossible. Somebody shout, move. Say it like you mean it. I can never look at mustard seed again the same way that I used to. But what grabbed me the most about the trip was that there was such a big difference between the holy city of David and the surrounding geographical terrain. From the top of Mount Olives, there was a view of a metropolis. You could see the golden dome. You can see the temple mount, the gates, and the city, the graves, and you could see the Kedron Valley. You could see all the architectural structures, the old architectural structures. And then, before you could blink your eye, Immediately, all of a sudden, the whole terrain changed. And right outside the walls of the city of Jerusalem, there was nothing. Nothing but tr no trees, no grass, nothing green. All you could see was desert. Sand. Rock. Mountains, nothing but yellow rock. And then I understood what Mark meant. And a great while before day, Jesus went out into a desert place. So that he could pray. I understood then. And when I read the text. I can never read this again. When Luke tried to get us to see. And when Jesus was full of the Holy Ghost. The spirit drove him. <laughs> into the wilderness. So that he could be tempted. 40 days and 40 nights. By Satan. I knew how quickly it is. One step. Between. The sun shining. And the storm raging. Somebody shout one step. You don't know how quickly. can Something can change. Overnight. And I knew immediately. Why Jesus said in the text. If any man thirst. Because we don't know our dry seasons. Oh you might be having a good time right now. But you never know when your dry season. <laughs> will show up. Is there any run to why the Lord says, blessed is the man who hunger and thirst after righteousness, for he shall be filled. If David was here this morning to preach this sermon, he would say, pray this way. Oh God, thou art my God. Early will I seek thee. My soul thirsted. 
for thee. My flesh longs for thee in a dry and thirsty land where there is no water. Notice with me, notice with me, notice with me this morning. For a moment, how John shares with us, it was the last day. The great day of the feast that Jesus cried out to the gathered crowd. Biblical records indicated that this was the feast of tabernacles. Or as the Jews would refer to it as Sukkoth. The Feast of Booths. Through his servant Moses, God Almighty, Yahweh instructed the children of Israel to celebrate their history. Let me pull on the side here a moment. <laughs> Can anybody celebrate their history? Y'all can do better than that. Can anybody celebrate their history this morning? For God told Moses, tell him. Celebrate what I've done for them. Y'all don't hear me this morning. History was nothing more. The history of the children of Israel was nothing more than a window through which God showed up. You see, somebody's waiting on their ship to come in now. But God is saying to you this morning, look out your window for what I have already done. Can somebody stand on their feet right now and say, if he don't bless me, another blessing already, I will thank the Lord for all that he's done and all that he is, for he has brought me. So y'all can't celebrate. Why don't you celebrate like he blessed you? The Lord. Throw your head back and say already. David said my cup runneth over. God said tell the children of Israel celebrate my history. So y'all sit down. Sit down. The children of Israel worshipped God because they remembered they remembered they didn't forget when the waters of the Red Sea rolled back like a scroll and they walked across Somebody say they didn't forget. They didn't forget. I'm trying to help somebody here this morning. I don't, I don't know who you are. The Lord is speaking to somebody. They didn't forget when they walked across the Red Sea as though it was dry. Then they didn't forget when they got hungry. Manna fell. From heaven when they got thirsty. Water. Flowed from the rock. They didn't forget. You see somebody you didn't forgot. You sitting up here this morning. You waiting on the blessing. And the Lord will say to you. Who woke you up this morning. And started you on your way. Who kept back the hands of Satan while you slumbered and slept last night? Who woke you up this morning and say, Lord, I thank you for my 
Big was not my cooling board. See, y'all don't know how to praise God this morning. Y'all don't know how to open your mouth. Somebody then forgot that when you are, when you called on the Lord, he answered your prayer. And if the Lord, if you remember what God has done for you, why don't you open your mouth wide right now? Look at your neighbor and say, what you waiting on? Who put a roof over your head? And who put clothes on your back? What you waiting on? Had it not been for the Lord. On my side, tell me. What would I be? What would I be? He kept back my enemies. He let the sun shine through a cloudy day. Shh, throw your head back and say, oh, what you waiting on? He wrapped me in the cradle of his arms because he knew I had been battered and scorned. If you knew what good things the Lord has done for you. Dick, why don't you wave your hand for me just one moment? If you knew that the Lord have looked beyond your talk and saw your need. Wave your hand a moment. Because if you who are on social media can't see you, but stand on your feet and just wave your hand. If the Lord, if you knew that the Lord looked beyond your faults and saw your needs, you ought to tell somebody, Lord, I thank you. If you know that the Lord has been better to you, than you've been to yourself. You ought to be thankful this morning. You don't have to wait till I close. You don't have to wait till the choir sings or the deacon prays. You can shout right now. God instructed Moses. He said, Moses, you tell the people, I want every man, woman, and child to get out of their sealed houses. Come out and get out of the way of their creature comforts for seven days. Seven, the number of completion. See? Seven days. A seven day festivity. For seven days. He said, I want them to live in booths. Get out of your panel house. As a commemoration. When you didn't have nothing. You still had me. See, y'all ain't got that. It went right over your head. How many of y'all remember when you ain't had nothing? But the only thing you had was God. And when you cried out, God heard you. He said, tell them, get out of those houses. Get out of those BMWs and those Mercedes and get boots. And I want you to live in them seven days because I don't want you to forget when you didn't have Medicare. 
when you didn't have Master Chuck, you still ate. When you didn't have air condition, I sent breezes. When you didn't have doctors and medicine and may I ask for it. I healed you. When you didn't have something to laugh at, I gave you joy. A joy that the world couldn't take from the great gift to you. And the world, a joy that the world couldn't take away. To tell them to live in boots. Go sit down, sit down, sit For seven days. So they had to go out, Dr. Babin, and find trees. And they would cut down the branches, the willow trees, a symbol of their tears. And they cut down branches of myrtle trees. That spoke of their fertility and their productivity, the fruitfulness. And then they took palm trees. And they put the palm tree in the middle. Then they took a gold thread and wrapped the myrtle tree. The palm trees and the willow trees together. Let me say that again. They took the myrtle tree, a symbol of their fruitfulness, and they took the willow tree, a symbol of the bitterness, and they put the palm tree in the middle, a symbol of their praise. And then they took the gold string and wrapped it around the three of them and began to wave their branches. Somebody ought to get on their feet right now and say, Lord, I thank you. Say it like you mean. Say it like you've been blessed. I thank you for the good times. And I thank you for the bad times. I thank you for the sunshine. For the rain. Yeah. Yeah. Can you see him with me? Can anybody thank him right now? I hear what you're saying. I hear what you're saying. How can I thank him for difficult days? <laughs> My difficult days taught me how to pray. My heart taught me that I have a God who sits on high. See, y'all ain't praying with me. Y'all ain't praising them like I'm preaching. My hard days, my sick days taught me I've got a doctor. Who's never lost a patient? Anybody need to praise him right now? I said, anybody need to praise him? <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.
He picked me up, turned me around, planted my feet. Say it. Say it. Say it. For seven days. <laughs> For seven days they walked by with the branches in their hands. But on the last day, <laughs> on the great <laughs> day, the high priest got a pitcher of water. I wish I had a pitch in my hand right now. Went down to the pool of Siloam and got a pitcher of water. And why is the... The Dr. Clayton message. Couldn't wait. He took the water. And as he began to pour out the refreshing and the renewal, they began to shout. Because it reminded them of the God. The God who answered prayer. It reminded them of the God who said, I, I will bless you. When, when you walk through the water, come on, give it here, give it to me, give it to me, come on, real quick. Have a thing. I said on the seventh day. I need a trust. The fuck? The fuck? The blessings came down. An outpouring of the Holy Ghost. There's an outpouring hey, of healing in the house. And when Jesus saw it, he said, it's any man thirst. Come to me. And out of his belly, so river, river, river. <laughs> That woman at the well was going through a dry season. Anybody ever been there? I don't care how hard you pray. I don't care how hard sometimes you pray. You got to go through dry season. Come to me. If you call my name, somebody needs to call it right now. Say Jesus. Shout it like you mean it. Shout it like you're going to bless you. For that you are the name. 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 You are the name.
Lord said to the woman, if you knew who was asking you to give you a drink, she would have ask him to give because if you drink from this water somebody shall never one more time never thirst anymore she took one drink sister ball Put our water pitcher down. <laughs> and she ran back into the city and said, Come. Come. Come see a man. They have talked about. It's my name, but see a man that told me everything that I did. Come see a man. Come see a man. Come see a man. Who looks beyond my fault. See a man. Who beyond my fault. What's his name? Jesus. My rock, a present help. What's his name? A bridge of to the fatherless. Sarah. Uh -huh. The truth. What's his name? Ten thousand years ago. Said I might have the right to the truth. What's his name? Said, if any man comes to me, out of his belly shall flow rivers, rivers. Somebody need to praise him right now. And if you don't mind me, somebody shout with me out. It's your hunger. I thirst. I thank God that it's as good as it is. It's what I thirst. I want to see you blessed. Mm -hmm. Dr. Clayton, I want to see our children. Oh. Somebody shot our thirst. Mm -hmm. See, y'all don't know how to. Mm -hmm. I wish I had somebody that could say it like they mean it. Somebody mm -hmm. shot thirst. Hunger, for they shall be saved. But you got to hunger for it. Anybody hungry this morning? Anybody thirsty for God? My soul has the deep. After the water brook, my soul. I want to see every chair fit. I want to, I thirst. 
because I want justice in the street of America. God has said, I'm looking for thirsty people. When you see Shout. Mm-hmm. 